summons me from my ethereal wanderings. Luzar. What kind of beast is this? I see. You gaze upon verdant Myrdra, spirit of the wood, nymph of the dappled glade. I seek the knowing, beast, the truth of nature held within your ark. You want to answer? So I will ask. Answer these questions true, sweet beast, so that your ark may be known and your eye may open. And do choose wisely. Answer from your heart. A powerful god conscripts you into their service and offers you a choice. You may rule the underworld and never return to the living. Or you may serve at the god's pleasure in the mortal realm. Serve above or rule below. What say you? Sweet Bee, I see your wheels turning, Sweet Beast. Your village suffers from a terrible goon. He beats those weaker than he until they can no longer stand. All who have tried to reason with him have ended up the same way. Do you aid the victims or attempt to destroy the goon? You cannot do both. Ooh, how revealing. You and your youngest kin often go hunting, but the younger has never felled a mark. One day, a magnificent beast appears, and they cannot tell whose shot struck true. You know that their shot flew into the bushes while yours found the beast's heart. But out of pity, you tell them that they struck the killing blow. Upon your return to town, your kin proudly claims the kill and is offered a job by the town butcher. Do you allow the butcher and your kin to believe your deception? Or do you admit the truth? Ha! Oh dear. <clears throat> no bother, it's nothing. Moving on. Your son is tied to the track of a minecart and will surely die unless you pull a switch to save him. However, he pleads with you not to pull the switch, for his daughter, your granddaughter, is tied to the other track. Do you save your son or your granddaughter? It's not every day a question determines the course of your destiny. Or is it? Consider that it is you who discovers the Thane. The tree that offers immortality to all who eat its fruit. You could share this gift with all, but doing so may lead to war and embitterment. To the immortality of those who do not deserve it and will only abuse eternal life. Or you could limit immortality to the deserving and thus, through the deserving, bring a better life for all. Do you give immortality to all? Or only a chosen few? Fascinating! You have chosen your path, sweet beast. Your will is strong. The fire of the Ravager's eye glows within you. In the arc of every being, there are two eyes. We may see out of either, but most favor one over the other. The Ravager's eye is dynamic, driven, and endlessly hungry. Yet for all its power, its vision is clouded. The eye of the Ravager rarely sees beyond its own satiation. Like an animal chasing its tail, it knows no rest. The Doe's eye sees only what is before it. The gift of the doe is subtle, easily missed. It is a most mysterious presence inside oneself, conferring power without force, 
just as the doe itself cannot be sought, nor tracked, nor hunted. By answering true, sweet beast, you give me a wink, and now the gifts of your dominant eye will be open to you. Hmm. Would you care to hear a tale? It is about those who see as you do. I will tell you the tale of Belgoth, who also saw with the Ravager's eye. Belgoth lived in the era before the Root first bedeviled the pan and nipped at their hairy hooves. Belgoth was Drinkmaster of Flint, a village beyond the hill. One day, when Belgoth was traveling far afield, Flint was raided by bandits. They laid waste to every soul, old and young. Belgoth returned to find everyone he cared for watering the soil with their blood. Well, Belgoth tapped his store of spirit, filling Growler and Jeroboam by the gaggle, and he hoofed himself to my grove. Where lies the bandit's lair? he demanded. His eye was open, and I had no reason to deceive him. At my direction, Belgov tintinabulated to their den. There, he smashed a jug on his horns and struck flint with steel, and Belgov was reborn as a flaming figure of vengeance. He charged into the bandit's lair, hoof over hand, and in his enemy's bosom, the remaining stock of spirit took spark with explosive result. Some consider this a waste of life. For could not Belgoth have traveled elsewhere and rebuilt what he had lost? But I'll tell you this. Flynn's sister village stood free from bandit attacks for many years after that day. Belgoth's blaze of glory saved it. He died with the Ravager's eye open and no mercy in his heart. Terrible waste to drink, though. Is there anything else? Knowledge of me? Of our wonderful world? You stand before Mirdra, spirit of the natural world, daughter of stem and stream. My sisters and I are the glorious weavers of all wild beauty. When mountain, spring, and sturdy tree trunk take your breath, sweet beast, that is us. That is our blessing. An immeasurable number. Mother stem and mother stream rely on us to sprawl and grow. Though we don't often commune with beasties such as you. Not in this age. Especially not since what happened to Kaula. A tragedy, beast. Tragedy most cruel. Kaula was fascinated by mortals, by your lives and stories. Unlike most of us, she made herself no secret. And you worshipped her with your short lives, even built her a house. A temple, you called it. The Root found her there. We godlings are not easily unwoven, however, and it slew her not. But perhaps it would be better if it had. For what remains is no longer the sister I knew. But we hold happy thoughts. Regret only wastes one life with another. Is there something else we can talk about? By day, a dappled glade of emerald branch and golden leaf, carpeted by downy moss. By night, by night, sweet beast, the trees bewitched the lost and inebriated. Or so it was before this age of extermination. How I long to return to play. This age, for me, holds only decay. <gasps> this has been just a lovely distraction.